I'm Natalie McNeil, creator of SheTakesOnTheWorld.com and a proud spokesperson for Invisalign. As a teenager, I needed braces to straighten my teeth, but I didn't think I would need braces again as an adult. When my teeth started to shift a few years ago, I have to admit I was a little self-conscious about my smile with all the videos and press I was doing. Invisalign was the only option for me. My smile has become one of the signatures of my personal brand and gives me the confidence I need to take on the world. Invisalign is nearly invisible, comfortable to wear, and comparable in price to metal braces. You can learn more at Invisalign.com. Welcome to the Conquer Summit. I'm your host, Natalie McNeil from SheTakesOnTheWorld.com, and I am so, so excited that you decided to join us for our second annual Conquer Summit. Now, to kick things off, I wanted to help you clear the blocks and the limiting beliefs that you may be experiencing that are keeping you stuck right now in your business and your life and preventing you from moving forward and having the kind of success that you desire. Here to help me with that is one of my dear friends, mentors, and teachers, Susan Bushel. And we are going to be taking you through a live demonstration of emotional freedom technique, EFT, otherwise known as tapping, which you may have seen uh, done online before or in another demonstration or at another event. But we're going to take you into some of those core limiting beliefs that I find a lot of women entrepreneurs carry with them. So with that, I want you to meet my lovely teacher. Uh, she taught me EFT and she is an energy therapist and just a brilliant light in this world. So Susan, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you for inviting me, Natalie. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> I want to start by talking about what EFT is for those people who maybe haven't heard of it before or those people who have seen it before and think, what the heck? That can't help me because I was one of those people when I first saw it. I was thinking, those people just look a little strange doing that. What is that? Can that really help? And I, I found that, yes, it did really help. So can yeah. you tell us what EFT is and why it works? You're right. It does look odd. But if you understand a little bit about Chinese acupressure points or Japanese shiatsu acupressure points, then you might understand a little bit about how it works and why it works. The best way to describe EFT is to think of it as acupressure for your emotions. Mm. So you're focusing in on an uncomfortable feeling or an event or a limiting belief, um, uh, something that just feels uncomfortable or negative. And while you do that, you tap on these very powerful points on your face and your body, and there's some on your fingertips. And lo and behold, the feeling or the uncomfortableness uh, goes away. And um, we know what happens is that the, the nervous system calms down. The brain in particular goes into a very quiet, almost meditative state, like a theta brain state. But meanwhile, you've paired it up with an uncomfortable belief or a limiting belief or, a, or a, an event that's happened to you that's been hard for you. And uh, so it, it almost... Um, rewires the brain, it sort of calms everything down uh, and associates it with that original uncomfortableness. So it can work very quickly. It can also be very complex and uh, have lots of convolutions, but uh, with persistence and skill, usually things become a lot lighter and feel a lot, a lot brighter. Yeah. And I found that with myself too. I think some of the biggest breakthroughs in my business happened after I started working on Clearing those blocks and EFT was a huge part of that. Who would have so, thought it, eh? A goofy little tapping. Who would have thought? And that's why I think it's so important that we kick off this summit with 
some EFT. So Wonderful. can you share with us the EFT points sure. that we are going to be going through as we do these two live demonstrations sure. today? Yeah, that's no problem. Um, I'm going to use the shortcut version. I won't use all the points. Um, it's not necessary. If you take a full training, you'll learn all the points. But I'm going to use the points um, primarily on the face and on the upper body. Um, and the first thing we do is we focus in on the problem. So whatever the problem is, at least as much as you know what the problem is. See, we only know so much about what's going on. Most of the uh, things that are blocking our success are unconscious anyways, but we start with where we are, right? And then we set the intention with the body by tapping on the outside edge of the hand. And you can use either hand and you can switch back and forth if you get tired. And we call this the karate chop point for <laughs> obvious reasons. And while you're uh, tapping here, we say a very particular... Um, set of phrases and it goes <clears throat> something like this even though I have this problem and we describe the problem in as much detail as we know and understand I deeply and profoundly accept myself or even though I have this problem I'm choosing to accept myself anyways so it's got this beautiful balance of here's this problem that I'm coping with but what the hell I'm gonna what the heck <laughs> sorry I'm it's okay I'm gonna no. accept myself anyways <laughs> right I'm gonna be okay even though I have this problem yeah. so so we do that and we do that three times and then we focus on the problem and we tap on these very particular points right here so we've got the very inside edge of the eyebrow where it meets the bridge of the nose and then the corner of the eye and you're you're not on the temple out here you're actually in really really close to the corner of the eye and then you tap on the very top of your cheekbone we call it under the eye point under the nose in the crease under your mouth so not so much the chin but right here in the crease and then we tap on collarbone points you've got these two subclavicular knobs these two bumps in the middle of your collarbone and we're going to go about an inch to an inch and a half under those and we're just on either side of your sternum and we're going to tap lightly there and then we go down in under your arm. So for ladies, it's on the side of the body where the side of the bra sits. And for gentlemen, it's about four inches below their armpit. And for those of you at home, I'm going to let Susan lead and I'm going to be repeating after her. So she is going to say a phrase. I'm going to basically just repeat that exact same phrase while continuing to tap on those points and you can repeat after Susan just like I'm doing so um, you can follow me and we're all going to follow Susan. <laughs> okay. Right. So I have one to start off with that I find is a huge limiting belief among women entrepreneurs. I hear this all the time and that is around not feeling good enough and what I like to call the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So people feeling like a fraud or they're not that good at what they do or they shouldn't be charging more because they don't even know what they're doing or maybe one day someone is going to figure them out. So can we start with that mm -hmm. one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've, I've run into clients with this as well. So I'm going to just use some of the words that I've heard and some of the things that you just said. And I'll encourage um, your audience to just first take a little bit of a read on themselves and how true that feels for them. I'm an imposter. It's just a matter of time before they figure me out. Um, I really don't know what I'm doing. And uh, I don't really have the skill set to get to do, to do this. And take a read between zero and 10. So 10 being this is really, really true for me and very uncomfortable. And zero being well, it's not really an issue at all. And just allow yourself to just see or hear a number or feel a number within there. And that's our starting point. And then we're going to tap here. And we do it with like call and echo, right? So everyone can tap with us and talk with us. And then just see where you end up at the end. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, so even though I have this problem, even though I have this problem, I'm an imposter. I'm an imposter. I really don't know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing. And it's just a matter of time before they find out. And it's just a matter of time before they find out. I deeply and profoundly, I deeply and profoundly accept myself anyway. Accept myself anyway. Even though I'm pretty sure, 
even though I'm pretty sure. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. It might look right. It might look right. I might be doing some of the things right. I might be doing some of the things right. But it's right. just a matter of time. But it's just a matter of time. Before it all goes horribly bad. Before it all goes horribly bad. I deeply and profoundly. I deeply and profoundly. Accept myself anyway. Accept myself anyway. Even though. Even though. I know I've got this problem. Even though I know I've got this problem. I'm an imposter. I'm an imposter. I'm not the real thing. I'm not the real thing. But I'm choosing to accept myself anyway. But I'm choosing to accept myself anyway. Okay, and then we take these two fingers and we come up to those points. And it's nice, a few of them are paired up. And we'll just maybe use a little reminder phrase to keep us focused on the problem. I'm an imposter. I'm an imposter. And just take a nice deep breath. And then beside the eyes, but I'm an imposter. But I'm an imposter. And then under the eyes. But I'm an imposter. But I'm an imposter. Under the nose, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Under the mouth, before they figure me out. Before they figure me out. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Before they find out. Before they find out. I'm an imposter. I'm an imposter. Nice deep breath. So that's just one round, and we could go around a few rounds, but just out of curiosity, I think it would be really fun for your audience to just check in with that scale again from 0 to 10, come back to the problem, come back to the feeling attached to the problem, and measure from 0 to 10. So 10 being really uncomfortable and 0 being it's not an issue at all. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in our chat, feel free to share your results and whether or not you feel that difference and what your number is now. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one that I wanted to cover, and for those of you at home as well, and Susan, you can confirm this, but um, people can, you know, with the recording, go back through that again and even change sure. the wording up a little bit uh, for them if that's something that they want to do or there's a, a different set of words that that's come right. to mind. And right? very likely what happens with people is once they tap a round or two on that, words or more um, feelings will begin to emerge and so that's what we call an emerging aspect and that's what you would use for your next setup um, you sort of go back around so say for example somebody's noticing um, that they remember someone else in their life who was quite influential for them when perhaps they were young but then they found out later on that person was kind of fake or a fraud or didn't measure up uh, or weren't as ethical as they thought they were originally and they felt let down Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's an, a sort of a, an energetic sort of a, a history, an emotional history with that. So then that's what they would tap on next. Okay. So how could they set that up? What would be a phrase that they could use mm -hmm. if that was the case? Yeah. Um, so let's just envision, let's pretend it was a teacher or a coach, okay. right? Somebody like that. And we'll back up here, take that reading again. So let's say that feeling has emerged. There's been a memory. Oh my goodness. I remember this time, right? where my grade two teacher let me down something like that so so we would just say something like e, e oh and measure your suds measure measure your scale from zero to ten where that is for you and then you'd say something like even though even though I'm remembering that teacher I'm remembering that teacher I thought she was so great I thought she was so great she was fantastic she was fantastic I really really liked her I really really liked her and then she let me down. And then she let me down. She did that thing that I didn't agree with. She did that thing that I didn't agree with. Let's say she was judgmental. Perhaps she was judgmental. She was judgmental. And she picked on one of, the, one of my friends. She picked on one of my friends. And I didn't agree with that. Didn't agree with she that. She wasn't as good as I thought. She wasn't as good as I thought. And I've got some feelings about that. And I've got some feelings about that. But I deeply and profoundly. But I deeply and profoundly. Accept myself anyway. Accept myself anyway. Even though she let me down. Even though she let me down. I thought she was really, really awesome. I thought she was really awesome. Turns out not so much. Turns out not so much. I deeply and profoundly. I deeply and profoundly. <clears throat> accept myself anyway. Accept myself anyway. Even though she let me down. Even though she let me down. She really let me down really let me and down. And I can feel that in my body. And I can feel that in my body. Right now. Right now. 
And it might be fun to kind of locate that feeling. I yeah. think for a lot of people, they hold that in their hearts. Exactly. Face. Yeah. Often in through the chest. Lock and throat. In the you chest, got it. Yeah. You got it. And I deeply am profound. And I deeply am profound. Except exactly why I'm feeling that way. Except exactly why I'm feeling that way. Yeah. She let me down. She let me down. She really let me down. She really let me well, down. Maybe take a nice deep breath here. <sighs> and under the eyes, I thought she was great. I thought she was great. How could I have been so wrong? How could I have been so wrong? She said that thing to my friend. She said that thing to my friend. And it was never the same after never that. Never the same again. She really let me down. She really let me down. She was my favorite teacher till then. She was my favorite teacher after till that, then. After that, I didn't even want to be in her class. After that, I didn't even want to be in her class. I didn't even want to be in her class. Didn't even want to be in her class. And she let me down. She let me down. Big time. Big time. And I've got some strong feelings and about that. I've got that. some strong feelings about that. A nice deep breath. So it's important to know that it's not the words that clear the feelings. It's actually the tapping. But the words keep you focused and keep you on track so that you don't end up, you know, thinking about your grocery list or something like that. Yeah, for sure. And for people who were who were maybe not resonating with the teacher letting them down, right. what is it called when the feelings come up anyway? Yeah. And we can... Yeah. It, and sometimes you don't those. even have a label for the feeling, but it's an yeah. aspect that comes up or a memory that comes up or suddenly you recognize, whoa, I got a belief around this. Let's say in that moment in that class, you decided that the teaching profession are all fakes, mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that. And exactly. you're still carrying that through into adulthood because you will, because it was a powerful moment for you as a child. And there's almost like a trauma or like even just maybe a little T trauma attached to that. Right. Yeah. And then you carry that forward. <clears throat> I think for me with uh, going back to the last one, it was, um, it was seeing other entrepreneurs who I really admired and looked up to who were doing so well, who were making millions of dollars. And then I would meet them in person mm. and found out they weren't really who they say they are. Yes. They weren't that kind person who they, they put on that persona. Yes. And it was so inauthentic and yeah. so fake. And I thought, you know, is it only the people who do that, who are fake, who are slimy, who get to the top? And that mm. became a big block. It can be a for huge me. block yeah. for people in terms of their prosperity if they believe they have to be somebody like that to succeed. I have to be sneaky. I have to be underhanded. Um, yeah, there's a lot of beliefs about wealthy people that are not very kind. Right. Yes. Right. And so it's important to clear all of those. Why would you ever want to become one of those people, right? If you believe that you're going to end up like that. Exactly. Yeah. And that setup that we did for the teacher, you could always, you know, substitute that Go back, watch the recording of, of this video, and you'll be able to substitute that teacher for, you know, that entrepreneur you look up to who let you down or that parent or that friend. It's something that you can sub to fit your own needs. So That's right. just wanted to make sure people and know that. The one thing I, I wanted to say is also just pay special attention to the earliest memories Sometimes mm -hmm. we really think that if I have a problem right now, it's about right now, present time. But almost all the time, it goes back to an earlier issue, event. It often goes back, believe it or not, as far back as childhood. By the age of five or six, most of our belief systems are in place. And guess who Absolutely. we've learned them from? Yeah. <laughs> and as much as I, I mean, I love my parents. They've been so supportive of my whole entrepreneurial mm -hmm. journey. And growing up, you know, I've they worked very hard for everything that they had. I thought it should be hard to make money, that it's right. when you're you young, you start out yeah. um, having to really dig your heels in and prove yourself and, and mm -hmm. try to make things happen because it's so hard. And I actually, um, one of my very first homes was in a trailer park. And mm -hmm. I realized that that led to a lot of limiting beliefs as well as I was starting my own business. Yeah. And it's amazing how, you know, this is going back to when I'm two, three, four years old, these beliefs that were right. still rooted. Very it's influential. Crazy. Very influential and um, very powerful. Very, very powerful. So important to kind of pay attention to that. And, and the thing, one of the, the, there's many things I love about EFT, but one of the things I really love is that there's no blame. It's just mm. absolute acceptance of exactly how you feel and how you got there so that um, you can let go of, oh, well, I can't say that about my father, about my mother, about my teachers, about my coaches. Um, and and the, the coolest thing is that the more you accept it 
and allow yourself to feel exactly how you feel and just honor your truth, the quicker the feeling, the uncomfortableness shifts and leaves your body. And, um, and then you come back and you realize you, you have a brighter perspective or a more positive perspective around this. And, and we have a saying in the EFT world, the writing on the walls or the writing on my walls, right? So the writing on my walls came from my folks for the most part. And the writing on their walls came from their folks, which came from their folks. And is anybody really to blame for being parented? No, but all you can do is teach your children what you were taught. You can't teach anything you don't know. So if you didn't have a very bright or a very positive feeling around how to get be successful in the world, if you had that belief that you have to tough it out and work really hard, and certainly us here in North America, there's so many of us that are children or grandchildren of immigrants, and they did have to work really hard when they first got here, and that's right. the, how they survived. So that can be a very deeply embedded belief system. Yeah. For and sure. I find that with some of those beliefs, people will spend all day analyzing them and going through yeah. that analysis, and then they're just kind of frozen there because they don't actually take the steps. And what I love about EFT is that yeah. it doesn't <clears throat> matter. Like you said, there's no blame, there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit there and analyze where this this came from. You probably know where it came from. Now let's get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to sugarcoat it at exactly. all, which is so freeing. It's so freeing to be able to just tell it like it is. And the more you're able to do that and the more honest you can be, the quicker it, dis it just disperses. And as a matter of fact, I kind of have a lot of fun with kind of laying it on thick, right? <laughs> just getting really, really <laughs> negative. And, and that takes a bit of getting used to for people at first because we're always told, keep your eyes on the prize, be positive, don't focus on the negative, focus on the positive. And in the EFT world, we've learned that if we, if we really shine the spotlight on the negative with the tapping, then it shifts. It's not enough to just talk about it. And, and mm -hmm. that's another really hard thing for people to learn. Stop talking about the problem and start tapping on the problem. And yeah. all of a sudden there's a new perspective. And there's a physiological mechanism actually at work here. And that as you clear and you calm down and you feel calmer and more positive, literally blood rushes into the forebrain. The mm -hmm. prefrontal cortex flushes with, with blood. And guess what that part of your brain does? It problem solves. It comes up with um, options you hadn't thought of. Um, it allows you to see there's many choices, not just black and white, good and bad. Mm -hmm. So that part of your brain is oxygenated. <laughs> so yeah. it works. Yeah. And then you notice, hey, I, I could solve this. Or this isn't actually a problem. Or wow, this problem isn't even mine. I don't have to do anything about this. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, our audience is asking for one last demonstration, and I think this one is a, a really good one to uh, end with because I think a lot of people have that that goal in mind, that vision for what they want their business to be like, and I find that six figures is often one of those numbers that comes up over and mm -hmm. over again. People want to hit that mark in their yeah. business. They want to be earning a six-figure salary for themselves as well. And uh, some of the things that uh, people are, are saying is, you know, six figures feels like it's for the big shots. This is one of the beliefs that comes up. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be able to reach that. I fear I'll never be able to get to uh, Natalie's level or other entrepreneurs that I admire. So these are some of the beliefs that are coming up for our audience. Can yeah. we focus on Mm -hmm. on that one for one last demonstration for sure for sure and that one has a lot to do with worthiness mm -hmm. and deserving or non-deserving right i just don't deserve that amount of wonderfulness you know that amount of money or that much success so um and it you're right it's very pervasive in our society so again i'll have people just kind of tune in how much uh can you connect with that and is that true for you and you may even hear some words in your head and if it's possible, uh, kind of allow that feeling to sort of dwell. Where is it? Or, or guess if you're not sure. Just guess where it might be in your body. And take a read, even if you're not sure. You know, um, just take a read from 0 to 10 again. And remember that number. And then coming back here again. Even though I have this problem. Even though I have this problem. I'm not a big shot like Natalie. <laughs> I'm not a big shot like Natalie. She's got it going on. She's got it going <laughs> She's on. She's got it together. She's got it together. I can't measure up can't measure up. I don't measure up. I don't I'll measure never up. measure up. I'll never measure up. I'll never be as good as that. I'll never be as good I'll as that. I'll never make that kind of money. I'll never make that kind of but money. But I deeply and profoundly. But I deeply and profoundly. Accept myself anyway. Accept myself anyway. Do you see how beautiful that is, eh? All the negative. Yeah. It's just so true. And then, but I'm going to accept myself anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even though. Even though. There's no way I'm ever going to make that kind of money. There's no way I'm ever going to make that kind mm -hmm. of money. And it might be helpful to even see that number in your head. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's sort of number you're striving for. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels like pie in the sky. Feels like pie in the sky. That's so far away. That's so far away. Who do I think I am? Who do I think I am? I'm not That's that good. One. I'm not that good. I deeply and profoundly. I deeply and profoundly. Love and accept myself anyway. Love and accept myself anyway. Even though I could perhaps consider letting myself get close to that number. Even though I could perhaps consider letting myself get close to that number. But I could never truly reach it. But I could never truly reach it. And maybe you even know why in your head or mm -hmm. you have a bit of an idea. And I might even know why. I might even know why. Or I might even have a hint. Of I might why. even have a hint why. But even if I don't. But even if I don't. I'm choosing to deeply and profoundly. I'm choosing to deeply and profoundly. Accept myself anyway. Accept myself anyway. Mm -hmm. Up here. I'm not one of those big shots. I'm not one of those big shots. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't make that kind of money. I can't make that kind of money. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. It's not who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could get there. I don't think I could get there. Not like Natalie. Not like Natalie. That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. I'm pretty convinced. I'm pretty convinced. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I could dream big. I could dream big. But it's never going to materialize. It's never going to materialize. Not like the successful people I know. Not like the successful people I know. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. I might get close. I might get close. But I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to get there. And I love to say, because. Because. <laughs> and then wait. Mm -hmm. And then insert what pops to mind. And allow things to truly pop to mind, as opposed mm -hmm. to trying to think it up. Uh, if you can, uh, ask your brain to just relax and let go. You know, step to one side and take notes for me, right? And allow the unconscious to kind of pop up with what's really going on behind the scenes. And those are the unconscious motivators. They're the unconscious beliefs that are really driving your business. You know, after doing this for 10 years, actually 11 years now, um, <laughs> I, business is all about the emotional health of the people running the business. Mm. It really is. You can, you, mm. I'm, I'm sure you, many of the people you work with, they'll know as they just walk into a business, they can tell the emotional health of the people behind the business. So true. So anything you can do to calm and quiet the uncomfortable emotional moments that you've been through your emotional history we like to call um, it nullifies that it takes that out of the equation and you get to function from here this point forward so if you deal with your emotional history you deal with your emotional baggage that you've dragged into your business you clear that and all the limiting beliefs behind it and it might take you know some effort it might take a little bit of time mm -hmm. um, but if you stay focused with it maybe work with a tapping buddy or a practitioner who can kind of keep you focused and keep walking through that or learn how to tap for yourself and eventually you'll notice things will start to lighten up and opportunities will arrive people will start calling or suggesting things that you never would have dreamed of in the past absolutely and that's why i wanted to start this summit by working on those beliefs and hopefully you are in a way better frame of mind going into the rest of the summit thanks to the work that we've done here with Susan. So can you leave our audience with an actionable, something that they can do to continue taking action on this mm -hmm. once you know the screen is off and they're not watching us anymore? What's something that they can mm. do on their own to continue this work? Right, so find a moment in your morning, preferably early, think about your business day ahead. What do I have planned? What am I hoping to accomplish today? and allow yourself to notice. Just be mindful of how it feels. Are you nervous about it? Are you um, feeling underconfident? Are you tired? Um, are you wondering if this is really a good course of action for you today? Just notice the feeling. And it's, it's kind of impossible to teach EFT in a few minutes, but if you can do nothing more than just tap while you tune into the feeling, obviously the uncomfortableness, and take a deep breath. The breathing is important because it helps to, again, to calm your nervous system so that the tapping works. Yeah. And then just tap these points. And just notice. That's all you need to do. Just notice what happens. And if something more uncomfortable comes up, go around the points again. Right. Right? And keep breathing and tapping until choice, opportunity, even just a lighter perspective starts to arrive it could be as simple as well I might learn something new today right that could yeah. even just be 
a step forward for a lot of people. Right. So beautiful. And thank you all so, so much for coming to this first night of the Conquer Summit. I hope that this has served you. And I do give you this homework to do now for the next seven days until we meet again for the next session of the summit. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. I'm Natalie McNeil, creator of SheTakesOnTheWorld.com and a proud spokesperson for Invisalign. As a teenager, I needed braces to straighten my teeth, but I didn't think I would need braces again as an adult. When my teeth started to shift a few years ago, I have to admit I was a little self-conscious about my smile with all the videos and press I was doing. Invisalign was the only option for me. My smile has become one of the signatures of my personal brand and gives me the confidence I need to take on the world. Invisalign is nearly invisible, comfortable to wear, and comparable in price to metal braces. You can learn more at Invisalign.com.